The first alternate fingerings we use are also known as chromatic fingerings, and they help us play passages with um, half steps or chromatic scales really quickly and smoothly. If I play the chromatic scale without them, I can hear when they're not quite right. I can hear that little bump. If I play the same speed with the chromatic fingerings, I get a much more seamless sound. This is true even when we're going slowly in a slow melody. There's that little bump in the middle because I didn't use the alternate fingering. So my students often complain that the alternate fingerings are harder to remember. Yeah, they are. But I think everyone is smart enough to get there. It makes it so much easier to play fast in the long run. There are some very specific places to use certain fingerings, and we'll have a link to a chart I've made of when you should use which alternate fingering. And if you can practice those into your scales and everything you do right away, that makes a big, big difference. The next alternate fingerings I learned were the ones that make the evil notes sound better. The evil notes are open G, G sharp A, and B flat. Each of those sounds kind of fuzzy and dull compared to the notes that would be the same in another octave. So much prettier then. There will be a link to the resonant fingerings I use. I play G, A flat, A, B flat. It helps the pitch and it helps the solidity of those notes. So instead of I have it just has a deeper sound. And in the middle of a nice slow melody, if the note is a little bit longer, if you can make that sound deeper, it makes the whole thing more beautiful. <laughs>